Thanks for joining us today at City Life. We believe today's message will empower you and point you towards Jesus. But remember that church is so much more than a message you listen to. It's a living, breathing community that we invite you to be a part of. We hope to see you on a Sunday morning at City Life, in person or online. a series called Lift. Can you say that? Say Lift. Look at the person beside you and say Lift, Lift, Lift. You know what? We live in two realities. We live in a world that we can interact with, with our five senses, but then Jesus followers, man, we have the option. We can live in a different realm as well. We live from a different space. We live from, you can call it God's space, God's reality, where we have, we can actually choose to live from a lifted perspective on life. We can live from an elevated perspective. We don't have to live by just what we see going on around us. We can see from an elevated perspective. And you know what, this is so important. You know, in tough seasons, all of those can'ts, shouldn'ts, don't, any other ints you can think of in there. You know, when you're in those restricted seasons, whether it has to do with just the season we're all restricted in right now or just maybe a personal restricted season, it's so easy in those seasons of can'ts and don'ts and it's not going to or all of the negatives. It's so easy to just get stuck in those, isn't it? Is to get stuck in just what you can see and we can, you know, we want to make sure that we don't get stuck. And that place of just what we can see and just it just living by what we see immediately in front of us or we just get caught up in the negative narrative of the world around us. You know what? We need to remember our lives are part of a bigger story. And it is a good story. It is written by an author that knows how to write stories. It's written by a good God. And he has written a great story that our lives are a part of. And you know what? That is such great news. It is, it is so easy to just get like, you know, you hear one narrative coming through the, through the news or through social media or through friends. And it's easy to kind of just get caught up in that without even realizing it. Has anybody else experienced that? It's like where you just get, you realize, and after a while, you're, you kind of hear something come out of your mouth. It's just like, that is not me. It's like, where did that come from? And so we, this, this lifted perspective that we can live from, it gives us, it, it, in the scripture, it says that we're seated with Christ in God's space. There's a lot in there that we don't have time to go into. What does that mean? It just means it's good news. It means we're not confined just to this world only. We live, but you know what? This, this lifted perspective, it also gives us not just an elevated perspective on life, it gives us a lifted perspective on God. It gives us a different perspective on God. We, don't, we can see how great and how good, how awesome God is. Is that, is that the perspective that you have on God? You know, I always find it so amazing that when the good stuff is happening, a lot of times God gets left out of that equation. But oh boy, do you hear about it when something bad goes? Anybody else notice that? It's like he's quick to get blamed for all the bad stuff that happens. Why did God do this? Why did God do that? And God's going, me? Uh, let's talk about that decision you made six months ago. I did not do that one. That was all you, baby. But it's true. But you know what? God is so good. And I think this is where we live this whole living beyond street level faith is to live with such an awe of who God is. Not, it's, it's to live with a greater awe of who God is than the awe or awfulness of our circumstances. And that's what we're talking about. And so this series, it's, you know, God is just, he is so beyond our comprehension. God is indescribable. He is beyond. He is the greater than we can imagine God. And I think it's so important that we remind ourselves of that. God will do beyond what we ask or think or imagine. He is beyond our words. You know, we were just, we were singing that song, you reign above it all. It was pretty powerful. I would agree with you, hon. It was kind of like a tear, tearing moment in, 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 in worship. 
But there was something that just, you know, God, you reign above it all. And right away, it's just like, you know, over the universe and over every heart. And I'm like, yeah, God, you, you see even way beyond where Pluto is. Way beyond all these other galaxies. God's out there and he knows all that stuff that's going on. Do you think he knows what's going on in our circumstances? Yes, he does and he cares. And so this series, we've been looking on lifting our expectation, lifting our eyes, lifting our attitude. And you know, if you're tuning in with us for the first time online, you can jump on, not right now, but you can jump on later and check out the series from the last couple weeks or church in the room as well. You get caught up. If this is your first Sunday with us, you can jump on and listen to the other messages. But today... Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Tell the person beside you, lift your voice. Lift your voice. I can't hear you through your mask. Lift your voice. <laughs> and here's a question to ask ourselves. What theme, what tone, what perspective is speaking loudest from our life? Or what tone or what theme will speak loudest? What's speaking loudest in our in our life, in our comments, in our posts. What's speaking loudest through our masks? <laughs> will it be the current reality or will it be God's possible? And today, we're gonna look at an interesting guy in the Bible. And he's kind of a, he's a, one of these one-off characters that if it weren't for the way we're introduced to him, Majority of you would have never known who he was. He is a guy who refused to be defined or confined by the current reality over his life. And it is one of the most bizarre stories in the Bible. How many of you have read some bizarre stories in the Bible? There's some bizarre stories. You want bizarre? Go to the book of Judges. The whole flipping thing is Philip Bizarre. It's just like, this one guy, he chops up this girl and sends her body parts all over the country. It's just like weird. It's just like, this is disgusting. It's got nothing on Dexter. It's just like, oh, this is just so bizarre. Not that I watched that series or anything, just to qualify that. But this is one of the most bizarre. I remember, like, anyway, we'll go there. How many of you remember the movie Up? You remember the movie Up? Okay, Do Doug the Talking Dog. Remember that dog? He comes running up and he's got that little voice box thing that, hello, my name is Doug. I am so glad to see you, squirrel. <laughs> this story is like a squirrel moment in the Bible, okay? So we're going to jump in to one of the most thrilling passages of Scripture. Are you ready? Oh, it's so good. The sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. And Reiah, the son of Shobal, begot Jahath, and Jahash begot Ahumai and Lahad. And these were the families, or the Zorathites. These were the sons of the father of Etam, Jezreel, Ishma, Ibbash, and the name of their sister was Hazel Elponi. And Penuel was the father of Gedor, and Ezer was the father of Husha. Aren't you blessed? Oh, we're going to keep going. These, because it's got to be painful before it gets good. These were the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephratha, the father of Bethlehem. And Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hila and Nera. That is not a go ahead and do two wives. Okay, this is one of the things, don't do what the Bible did. Nera bore him Ahuzam, Hefer, Temeni, and Hash. Oh, here we go. Ha Ashtari. There we go. Atari. These were the sons of Nera. The sons of Hila were Zareth, Zohar, Ethnan, and Kaz begat Anab, Zobiba, and the families of Avaharhel, and the son of Haram. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. The descendants of Rekah were Chalab, the brother of Shuha, the son of Mehar, and his son was Mehar and the father of Eshton, and so it goes. How freaky is that? We have eight verses of I could care less. I can't even pronounce out those names. I don't know who those people are. The book of Chronicles, if you were one of those, I'm going to start from the beginning of the Bible and read my whole Bible through, you would have definitely jumped over the first several chapters of the book of Chronicles, and you would have missed meeting a guy named Jabez. 
And see, this is what's so crazy about God. In the middle of this, dear God, is this ever gonna end list of names, we have a mini biography of a guy who lifted his voice to God in a pretty bold prayer that not only got God's attention, God answered. So here's a little side tip. Here's how to, here's a little how to understand your Bible. See, when you're reading scripture, it's not just what's written, it's, that's important. It's not just what's written, it's not just the words themselves that are important. It's how the scripture is written. In other words, the context. And so the fact that we have two verses in the middle of a list of boring. Why did God put the spotlight on this guy? God did it to get our attention. Because if you were one of those who actually read through the book of Chronicles, I remember the first time I had not heard about Jabez. And I was one of those I had read the whole Bible. And I remember first time here, it's just like, okay, how did I miss Jabez? So then I go back in, it's like, oh, I remember why I missed Jabez. Because I just bumped over all of those chapters. And it's like, but now, once you find little nuggets like this, it's like now you're looking for him. Now you're looking for where God hid some treasure. So let's look at Jabez. Let me introduce you to him and let's see how his experience might connect with ours. Here's some interesting, here's some things about Jabez. Jabez was a guy that was living in this tension. He was one of God's special chosen people, one of God's special humans on the planet, God's special people. He was of the tribe of Israel. But not only the nation of Israel, he was of the tribe of Judah that was the royal tribe. It was the special tribe. The Judah tribe, he wasn't the oldest, but because his two older brothers were really bad, the father gave the son, the oldest son's double blessing to the tribe of Judah. So this was a special tribe. So here we have, Jabez was living in this tension. He was part of God's special chosen people. He was of the royal tribe. He was supposed to be blessed, but he wasn't feeling it. And you know, it's interesting that if you, if you do flip back and go through those verses, you see almost all of the, the names, the father's line. It was all about the fathers, the fathers, the fathers, except Jabez, his father wasn't mentioned. Out of nowhere, he pops up and he's aligned. It's his mother that names him. He's identified with his mother. And see, this is really interesting because in the Jewish culture, the father's blessing was supposed to, the blessing to the kids or the blessing for their future was supposed to come through the father's words and the father's spoken declaration over their life. But instead, we have Jabez being named by his mother who basically said, you are a pain. And here's a connection. Here's a question I want to ask. I want to ask you, church online, and you know if you can relate to this, you can put thumbs up, or you can put, you know, oh my, or you know whatever kind of emotion you want to. But here's the question: Do you feel as if you're missing out on something you should have had, something you deserved? And I think there's a lot of things in this season we could all put our fill in the blank in there. What are you missing out on? that you feel like, I should have had this. I should have been going to school. I should have been this far in the business. I should have had that raise. I should have had that wedding. I should have been able to. I deserve this. I deserve this. I have served my butt off for decades in this industry, and now there's nothing there. I deserve this. How does that, are you in a place where you feel as though you're missing out on something you should have had or something you deserved? But then added to this for Jabez, he was defined by a reality he had no say in. Anybody relate to that? So it's like, I did not ask for this season. You know, it just baffles me. You know, one thing I really want to encourage us church and church in the room and church online, you know, one of the greatest things that, one of the greatest ways that we could lift our voice in this season is regardless of what we think about things our government and other leaders are doing, can we just remember none of them decided to lead in this season? None of them chose to lead in the worst possible season in hundreds of years. And even if we don't agree, maybe we could just encourage instead. 
Maybe we could just speak positive words instead. But he was defined by a reality he had no say in. And his mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. He was named according to a reality his mother had experienced. And you know, this is again, it's really important in Jewish culture. There was great symbolism in names. And somehow a person's name would foretell their future what their life was gonna be like, what was going to be a very defining quality about who they were as a person or what their life was. So to be named pain was not looking up. That was not a very good promising future if your mother named you pain. It's like the guy in the Old Testament whose name was Ichabod. It means God's glory has gone, it's gone. It's how you like to carry a horrible curse for your whole life. But here's another connection. You know what, that might be your experience. Maybe you're experiencing a painful reality that you didn't have much say in, that somebody else decided for you. Maybe former boss or friends that, you know, are kind of like wanting nothing to do with you. They just disconnected with no word. Maybe it was, maybe you're experiencing a painful reality that was a result of decisions or choices that your parents made or your spouse or former spouse made or the government made for you. You know what, and, but there's something, man, there was something about Jabez. He refused to take on the restrictions and the limitations and that negative narrative that he had been named by, that negative narrative that had been assigned to him. It was like there was something that rose up in him in this prayer where it's just like this painful reality is not going to be the way it is over my life. What did he do? Jabez lifted his voice. Everyone say, lift your voice. Lift your voice, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. That called on isn't just, okay, God, would you maybe, could you please? No, it was like this, God, I need you. He lifted, he called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. And you can just kind of hear that in that, oh, that you would bless me, God. You know, it's just like, oh God, this is terrible. Would you please? You can just hear the pain and frustration, can't you? It's just like this, oh God, you can just hear, would you enlarge me, would you bless me? This isn't the way things are supposed to be. Jabez lifted his voice up to God. We don't have Jabez lifting his voice up to complain or to reinforce the reality of his life. We have him, he, 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 he wasn't calling out his mom, he wasn't canceling his mom because she didn't curse him, you know? Jabez lifted his voice to do the one thing that could and would bring about change. He lifted his voice to God. And you know, here's the thing, and we're gonna see this a little bit more as we go on. He lifted his voice that would bring change not just for himself, but for others. See, Jabez called on God to deliver him. He called on God when, the, in the, when he was surrounded by pain and when he was surrounded by frustration and, and the limitations. He didn't just reinforce that reality. He called on God, oh God, that you would. There's something in Jabez that goes back. He remembers and he focuses on this promise that God had given to his great, 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 whatever great grandfather Abraham saying that above all the nations and above all the men on earth, I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna increase you. Those that bless you, they're gonna be blessed and I'm gonna take care of you. And through you, all the nations of the world are gonna be blessed. He's, Jabez is remembering, I think there was a promise to some guy that was for all of us, and I want it. I want it, that your hand would be with me. You know, there was something in Jabez, he recognized that God was the source of anything good that would come from his life. It would have been very normal for Jabez to, revo- to rely on his qualifications. I am an Israelite. <laughs> I am of the tribe of Judah, I am of the royal tribe. I did all these great things, but no, he relies on God. He doesn't rely on his own power. Instead, he lifts up his voice to God. And he lifts up his voice asking, God, would you bless me? He asks for God to enlarge his life. And you know, it's, it's, man, one of the things about when you walk with God for any length of life, or you you flip, you just get old. (laughs) 
You know, after a while, you just kind of get good at stuff. Isn't it true? There's a level of success that you start to experience. And those, this is maybe for those of us, not just we're older, but you've been walking with Jesus for a long time. You know, it can be so easy to think we're the ones who made our success. It can be so easy to think, man, I put in decades of hard work and I built this fill in the blank. I built an awesome family. I built an awesome business. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. But it's God's blessing on our life. God's the one that enables us. It's God's the one that enlarges. You know what? And if you're feeling like you're in a place where like things are just shrinking, like your influence or your ability or, or even just your hope for the future, man, there is something. God is the one that enlarges and we can't forget that. We need to remind ourselves. God is the one that expands our territory like he did. I love this. In a different version, in verse 10, it says, Jabez's mother had given him the name Jabez because his birth had been very painful. But, oh, I love the buts. Buts are really important words in the Bible. Some of the little, some of the smallest words in the Bible are some of the most important, but, yet, and, they're so important. But Jabez prayed to the God of Israel. You know, in between Jabez's pain and God's promises, there was a but. There was a but, a but that activated God's power. Did you know there is a big but <laughs> that can be very powerful? I love what Mark Batterson, this is actually from a different devotional. They got Mike quoted in when he's receiving the offering. He said, if you let your circumstances define the way you see God, you're a prisoner of perspective. But if you let God define the way you see your circumstances, you are a prisoner of hope. Man, what a powerful dis depiction of what, that was Jabez. He was not going to let his circumstances define how he saw God. He made his, he allowed God to define the way he would see his circumstances. He grabbed hold of that, but my name is pain, but there is a promise. My name is pain, but I'm going to pray. Here's a question. Which but will we activate? Which but will we give voice to? Which butt will we, will we speak out? Which butt are we going to lift up? Are we going to lift up the butt of excuses or the butt of prayer? The butt of praise. Man, the, one of the greatest things, if you are in a place where you feel confined, one of the greatest things you can do is you can just begin to, yes, this is what is said. Yes, this is what the reality is. But God, but God, but God, you are great. But God, you are awesome. But God, you reign above it all. You reign above it all over the universe and over every circumstance in my life. God, you are the one. That's the but that I am rehearsing. I love this. Jabez could have just been another name in the list. He could have been completely unknown, unnoticed, had he not lifted up his voice to God. He could have just been one of the guys. So back we got Ruhal, Ruhal be got blah, 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 Jabez be blah, 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 you know, we would have never known anything about Jabez. But here's the last one. He lived from an other's focused perspective. This is the key to it all. And this is one of the things where we just kind of, in our Western me, God's blessing me so that I can be blessed and my life can be awesome and amazing. I can be happy. I can do whatever I want. In that Western culture, there's a lot we don't understand reading the Bible, not because it's confusing, but because we have a filter over our thinking that is a cultural filter that just wasn't an issue to those God wrote and to those God spoke through. Jabez, the key line here, he said, God, that you would bless me, that you would keep me, that you would enlarge my territory, that you would keep me from evil so that I might not cause pain. And this is why God answered his request. Because he was calling out, he was lifting his voice, not just for himself, but he, was, he knew as he lifted his voice, he was actually lifting his voice for others. See what Jabez was actually, and, and, and this is where it's, it's so funny because this, Jabez's prayer, if you just look at it, 
It's kind of one of the most selfish sounding prayers in the Bible. God, would you do this for me? Do this for me. Would you bless me? Would you enlarge me? Would you make me great? Would you keep me from problems? It sounds selfish, doesn't it? It's so selfish sounding. But God answered it. It got God's attention and God answered it. Why? Well, because Jabez's prayer for blessing in the Jewish understanding, which is the culture that scripture first came to and came through. In other words, it was the first filter. And it's, there's a lot in scripture that you have to read it through that filter and through that context. Otherwise, you get some weird stuff. But through this context, in the Jewish culture, blessing was never meant to just stop with you. It was always meant to come through you to go to others. If you were praying for something and you had you were thinking blessing, immediately it was, God, how can you enlarge my life so that my life can be a blessing to others? God, if you're doing this for me, God, how can you heal me so I can be a blessing to others? God, how can you enlarge my business? How can you enlarge this? How can you increase our finances so I can be a greater blessing to the kingdom of God? See, that was the only context that blessing was understood by. So when Jabez was praying this prayer of God, oh, that you would bless me, he was really saying this, God bless me, enlarge me, be with me so that I can be a blessing to others. God, I want to not cause pain to others. I want to cause joy. I want to bring hope to people. I want to bring a life giver to people. That's what Jabez was really saying. Jabez lived according to a different narrative. Man, it would be so easy to stay stuck in the limitation and to just accept this is the way it is. This is the way it's going to be. But he didn't. He refused to give in to the limitation of his current situation. And he lifted up his voice and his story became a defining turning moment for the whole family line. See, the chapter of his life was set apart from all these other weird names, all these other people we don't even know who they are. Most of them we don't. But his life was set apart. His moment got the spotlight from God because something stirred in him. He refused to allow his life to be defined or directed by his current circumstances. See, Jabez, he wasn't intimidated by his circumstances. He knew his purpose was greater. And he lifted up his voice. And he's remembered not for a heroic act. He's remembered for a prayer request. Let's stand. I want to invite you to close your eyes. Church online, I want to invite you to stand too. You know what? There's something about changing your position. It brings a different attention to your focus. And you know, this isn't just a closing prayer. And I know you're going to probably going to go eat lunch or brunch or whatever soon. But I really want to invite you, if you're able to, where you're at, to stand. And, and there's something I really believe God wants to stir in us. Maybe even just the fact that we're standing is an act of allowing the Holy Spirit to stir something in us. God, we pray. Can I invite you? To, I want to just close your eyes. And I just, I want to pray. You know, this is the point. You know, the point of Jabez's prayer wasn't just what Jabez got. The point was that God, God was the one that changed the circumstances. And he changed Jabez from being a pain to being a conduit of God's blessing. And I want to invite you right now, church in the room as well as church on the line, wherever. I don't know what your pain is. I don't know what your, you, you feel confined, feel restricted, feel like maybe it's a long-standing label that has defined you. Maybe your whole family has been defined by addict. Maybe your whole family has been defined by divorce. Your whole family has been defined by, by disease or by this thing or by that limitation or by that painful circumstances or your whole family is, or, or, or whatever the situation is, there is a new thing that God wants to release. Will you let the Holy Spirit stir in you that same kind of God, I will not accept this as it is. You are a blesser. God, you're the one that blesses. And God, I just speak that faith right now into the hearts that are heavy, 
the hearts that are broken, the hearts that are carrying pain, the hearts that have, are suffering because of someone else's decision and a circumstance they had no choice in, they had no say in, where they're experiencing less than what they should have had. God, right now, I just speak a stirring of faith. God, let us be your, those that would lift our voice, not just, God, would you bless me, but bless us to be a blessing. God, would you bring this freedom? Would you bring this healing? Would you bring this provision so that our lives could reflect you, so that we could be that testimony of how great you are. God, so that we could be able to be that blessing of hope, that blessing of joy, that blessing of provision to those around us. God, we thank you. God, let that cry that Jabez, oh God, that you would. Oh God, that you would. Can you just pray that? Just say that, oh God, that you would. And only you know what the rest of that prayer is going to sound like, but it's between you and God. Oh God, that you would. Church online, say it as well. Oh God, that you would. God, that you would bless, that you would increase, that you would enlarge, that you would keep us from evil so that we would not be causes of pain, but we would be extreme conduits of your blessing. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you. We thank you. You're so good. We're so thankful. God, we love you. Come on, church. Can we just take a moment and let's give him praise? Church online, too. Let's just give him praise. God, we are so thankful. God, we are so thankful. We give you praise. God, we lift up our voice and we just declare you're so much greater than whatever circumstance we try to limit. We're so thankful. One more prayer, church in the room. Just it was, invite everyone online as well. Let's close our eyes. I want to invite anyone that if you've never said yes to following Jesus, man, that is what he's the great, the great blesser. And he wants to make your life a channel of blessing in so many amazing ways. And it starts by following him. And so we're all going to pray this prayer together. It's just a prayer of saying yes to following Jesus. Can we pray, church, just say, Jesus, thank you for everything that you've done through your life, through your death, through your resurrection. Jesus, I say yes to being defined by you. I will no longer be defined by my circumstances. I say yes to you and a new start with you. Amen. Amen. We hope today's message encouraged you. If you want to take your next step in saying yes to Jesus, you can always contact us at cty.lc slash next step or fill out the next step section on the City Life app. It's an honor to play a small part in what God is doing in your life. We look forward to connecting with you soon.